Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Okay. We got Netflix wide receiver coming out tomorrow. We got training camp in less than three weeks. Yesterday, so you know, we've we've done a couple of, of days of Kyrie Jackson reaction. And if you missed either one of those episodes, just us reacting to the tragedy from the weekend, the Sunday episode yesterday. Uh, and then as part of yesterday's show, we asked you guys, the listeners, during this sort of awkward transition period, there's really no news cycle. We can, if you want us to keep talking about Kyrie Jackson, we're we're happy to. If we're well, not happy to, I guess, but like we will. Right. Uh, but like, what do you want us to talk about? And you guys responded with emails, with comments on YouTube, and uh, I think the consensus was, hey, it's okay to move forward, talk about some other things, get back into sort of the normal flow of Purple Daily. And so you guys sent us a bunch of talkers that you'd like us to dive into. So we're, we're kind of doing like a midweek feedback Friday edition of purple daily here today. We will still do our regular live feedback Friday uh, at uh, 10 o'clock central time, but I've just sort of stockpiled a bunch of questions, takes and things from listeners yesterday. How do we move forward here on purple daily? So if you guys are ready, let's do it. Throw some stuff at the wall here. First, let's watch Declan throw golf balls at the wall at the meadows at mystic. (laughs) Uh, you know, whether I'm, I'm dunking balls, I can be dunking balls in the water, shanks, it doesn't matter. Guys like me can still go play the Meadows at Mystic Lake. And I know there's other golfers who are just like me, who might be a little, might be a little afraid to go play the Meadows at Mystic. No, no, no. I've, I've talked to these guys. They want the Dex tweets. Is they're, they're welcoming of the guys that shoot the 107 at the Meadows at Mystic Lake. You can book your tee time by going play to golf, the Meadows, play bad com. fast. I, it, I, I play with friends who regularly break 80. My my normal golf friends are shooting in, in the mid-70s. They're good golfers. And I get invited every time to play with. Why? Because I play fast. I play with urgency. I will gladly have a 108 on that card and still have a blast, and I will do it at the Meadows at Mystic Lake. Yes. So, okay, this one's from Razor. 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 Razor Ramon. Hey, yo. I hope this email finds you well. Thank you for that. It's a running joke on this show. (laughs) How the email actually finds us. Ah, my God. Now that that's out of the way, Razor says, I have a question that my cousin, a rabid 60-year-old Vikings fan in Connecticut, has posed and asked me to run past you guys. Here's the scenario. 2024 is a record-breaking season for Sam Darnold. He takes us into the playoffs, (laughs) actually wins a game, J.J. McCarthy, uh, McCarthy showing some flashes in practice. Maybe he's ready to start going into 2025 just behind the scenes. But Sam Darnold puts up career numbers everywhere. Vikings win a playoff game with him. Do we re-sign or franchise tag Sam Darnold and let J.J. waste another year on the bench? Do we try to trade Darnold and find a serviceable veteran backup for J.J.? I myself would trade Darnold and get ready for a run at a Lombardi with McCarthy, something I've waited 60-plus years to see. That's from rabid cousin, 60-year-old cousin in Connecticut. So I found this, by the way, just along these lines. FanDuel put out that there was a better who placed a $250 wager on Sam Darnold to win the NFL MVP award next year. (laughs) Potential payout on the $250 wager... $75,000, $75,250 $75,000 oh. $75,250 Okay So some somebody I don't know if it was rabid cousin Greg in Connecticut or somebody else but somebody is so confident that Sam Darnold a relative perhaps I'll Sam. be in Vegas next week I could I could match the bet I should yeah. match the bet maybe I was there last week and I I didn't have the stones your, to do this but you, why don't you just go I give you just 250 give me bucks, the 250 Josh. and we'll call it even <laughs> If you're gonna if you're gonna bet on Sammy, Boy he's to plus win the he's plus thirty thousand. That's that's his odds. Okay. Plus thirty thousand. Who so, else yeah. is in that range? Are there other players? In there? Um, yeah, Tony Pollard uh, is in that range. Nick Bosa. Nick Bosa has the same odds to win NFL MVP as Sam Darnold. Yeah, Debo Debo Samuel is the same. 
it's a quarterback award, so yeah. Drake May is the same. Cooper Cup's the same. Yeah, Michael Penix is the same. Um, TJ so Watt. So a backup quarterback right now. Is, Travis Kelsey. Actually, yeah. McCarthy has the same odds as, as Darnold to win MVP. So they just have a bunch of guys that. Yeah, just right a bunch. The last, yeah. the, the last non QB to win that award was Adrian Peterson, correct? In the 2012. 2012. I think huh? he's the last one. So that's, yeah. Did Calvin if, Johnson win one? We had a run there. For, we had we had some non quarterbacks in like the early two thousand. He Calvin flirted Johnson with it. I, I don't. Yeah, he, he probably won the NFL. Uh, like what offensive player of the year? Yes. He did not win NFL MVP. Let's see here. Okay, just for he since, did, since we're yeah. down this side street here, Adrian Peterson. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. And then in the early two thousands. Oh, Marshall Falk maybe. Did he win? Oh, it? Why don't you guys guess? So Marshall Falk yeah. won it in two thousand. Terrell Davis in nineteen ninety eight. Oh. Who are the other two non quarterbacks in the early 2000s to win it? Back to back years, by the way. 05 06. 05 06. Sean Alexander. Yeah. 05. Um, it was really good. And is it another running back? Yes. Is it Tiki Barber? No. No, he fumbled too much at the time. Sha- oh, LT. Ladanian Tomlinson. Ladanian Tomlinson. Yeah. In 06? Yeah. Yeah, 06. He was insane yeah, that year. And yeah. then the Vikings damn near signed him mm-hmm. in what 08? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So back to the to yeah, the sorry. Uh, yeah. Anywho. So to the Darnold defenders. So when would they trade him? Because like at the deadline is is that because that's they the can't, problem? He's a free agent. They after can't the trade year. him. It's a one year contract. Um. So here's here's their problem, or here is the problem. You're not going to sign him to if if he has a great year. You're not going to sign him to an extension because he's going to get blown away by a team that gives him a multi-year contract. You're not going to eat up JJ McCarthy's entire r- rookie contract to sign Sam Darnold to a huge contract. You can franchise him. That's going to cost you a ton too. I think short of like a Super Bowl championship, I don't see how he stays here. Because it's not in Sam's best interest if he proves himself and has a huge year to stay here. Let's let's put like a real actual scenario on this because MVP is too. Yeah. Even for a Darnold defender such as myself, I didn't have the guts to you're put not a, a bet down Donald when defend. I was in Vegas. You're not. You're no, a fraud. No. You're a fake. But let's let's take let's take this scenario and say, so he he helps lead the Vikings to a playoff win. So playoffs, a playoff yep. win. Yep. And in the regular season, let's comp him to like a Case I mean, Keenum, like twenty-three touchdowns. I was gonna say Baker Mayfield last year. Sure. Okay. So he so he okay. throws for four thousand yards. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty-four percent completions, twenty-eight touchdowns, ten picks, and his passer rating is ninety-five, which puts him twelfth twelfth in the NFL. He's gone. You wouldn't think twice at all. You wouldn't. You wouldn't a say, "Oh contract. boy, he's twenty-seven years a mul- old. A multi- he's a former year? top three pick." It defeat. It can entirely defeats the purpose of the McCarthy pick. I agree with you. Just for the so, record, so I would. But, I would but move in forward. his, but <clears throat> I'm saying from the Darnold camp. Okay, so like, let's say the the Vikings are like, "Yeah, dude, we'd love to keep you. It's been great. Sign, you know, a two year contract or something." There's going to be a team that's going to to be like, "Hell no, let's go three or four years." Okay, what if I'm going to keep adding here? What if McCarthy? I think he's going to be impressive behind the scenes, but like, what if he's just not that accurate behind the scenes? Oh. And you you get you're getting you're getting through this historical Sam Darnold season, four thousand yards. You're going to the playoffs, and <laughs> you like McCarthy as a guy, but I don't know. <laughs> He can't make the throws outside the hashes in practice, and he's You're he's not trouble, wowing then. you behind the scenes like Mahomes wowed the Chiefs seven years ago. Well, then Quasi and uh, Ko are in trouble, right? Like you like are they? You, they just found they the just Wilfs? found a four thousand right. yard passer. But now you got to come back and say, hey, hey, Wilfs, we got to sign this guy to a four year contract for you know. The Wilfs would be so excited if Sam Darnold led the Vikings to the playoffs, though, wouldn't they? I mean, they would. Be, oh yeah. They'd be yeah. so excited. Uh, we, yeah, I guess, but I don't see how it works. We've and we've just we've seen the song and dance so many times with random quarterbacks that step up here and surprise and lead this team to playoff runs or playoff success. At Case Keenum, Brad Johnson, Jeff George, Randall Cunningham, 
It but happens. Didn't... Gus Ferrat helped them get to the playoffs. You might not we... have started the playoff games. Like it just happens. We have a type. We have a type. We do. We, we, we do. do have we a type. know that. We know that it's like you get to the end of these, like the Bachelor, Bachelorette. You're like, no, yep. this uh, this is the right person but, to spend the rest of my life with. But, but I really like this dangerous. <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, they it, it's the equivalent of a one night football stand like Case. <laughs> and we've right? had some great ones here. Yeah, Brett I mean, Favre. Case Keen, well, Case was yeah, Case was great, but he was then gone. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Barry Sanders also won an MVP in 1997. He tied Brett Farr for the AP and then won the other ones. <laughs> Emmett Did Trell, Smith, Thurman Thomas. Terrell Davis won one. Terrell Davis. There is. Marcus there Allen. Be, there might be no position in all of sports that has hit the skids like running back has. Well, did you see that graphic? I retweeted this this morning. It's kind of crazy. Actually, this is a good segue into our next question here, but. Somebody put out a graphic. There's no attribution here of if you go back to like, what year was it? So last year, there was one running back who had 1,200 yards. It's Christian McCaffrey. 20 years ago in 2003, five, six, seth, 14. Bell cows, baby. 14 mm -hmm. bell cow, 1,200 bell yard running backs. They're gone. They've can disappeared. You, can you name... No, no. I, Can you I, name the 14 Dex bell cow running backs in 2003 that ran for 2003. 12 okay. All right. Uh, Amon Green. Amon Green, yeah. That's a good first guess. I think you're right on that one. Uh, actually, no. Amon Green did, did not. It? He did not make it. Oh, wait. No, I'm okay. sorry. He, yeah, he did. No, he did. Okay. 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 All right. Dex, I, I, I said Tiki Barber earlier. Is Tiki Barber on that list? Yeah. Okay. That's two. Um, let's go. I think he was still there. Deuce Staley. Deuce Staley is not on here. I'll okay. give you three strikes. All right. Uh, I, this, this one, he was still really good by this point. Clinton Portis. Yes. Clinton Portis. Tomlinson, right? Well, Danny and Tomlinson was on this list. Yeah. Alexander was there. In Sean Seattle. Alexander. Sean yeah, Alexander. That's a good one. Sean Seattle. Alexander. Sean Alexander. Bell Cow. It's five. You got five. It's a Bell Cow. Okay. Uh, Frank He's Gore. Right this is, I think this is a little early on Frank Gore. Is it here. Francis a Gore? Early on Frank really? Gore. I thought he was there. He just seems like he's played, he played like for like 40 years or something. Um, There's nine left. You guys have one strike to go. Jets out? Oh, boy. I'm trying to think. I don't think um, uh, Thomas Jones. Ah, he was right around. I think he was a little early, still a little early for Thomas Jones. Who was? Judd has just I mean, removed himself from this game. The Judd Vikings literally were, covered the NFL as a writer yeah. in 2003, and he has removed well, himself from the game. Takes more pride in this, so I'm going to allow him um, this chance. Trying to think, Judd Cardinals. hates games. I, I, I really don't like games much. This is fine, though. No, I really don't have a problem with this game, but you are correct. I hate games. You are so right. Who is like Cowboys Four and Cardinals so running backs bad. at this point? Cardinals? Yeah, Cardinals and like Cowboys. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Guys like that. And I'm I'm drawing blanks. This is tough. I'm drawing blanks. Did Jerome Bettis? Was Jerome Bettis still doing it? That's not a terrible guess. Because he yeah. was definitely still he was still around. Active and doing his thing. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay, here's the rest. Jamal Lewis. Oh, damn. He oh, broke I'm pretty that. sure he broke the record that year. The yeah, single game record. That's that that's that okay. Deuce McAllister, Steven Deuce Davis. Deuce McAllister. Priest Holmes, Pre oh, Ricky Priest. Williams, Travis Henry, Curtis Martin. Judd was oh. sniffing around Jets. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fred Taylor, Edger and James are the ones oh, okay. that you guys didn't get. Yeah, Fred Taylor. Yeah. There, there's there's about three or four in those that are upsetting. The other the other ones I'm I'm okay with. I'm okay with missing out on. <laughs> so this it's a good segue running backs here. So Saints five six seven eight nine in the Purple Daily YouTube comments. So he says, how important is it? Or wait a second. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. He says the next few weeks, you should, you guys should rank things. And he point, and Declan, you sent us this too. ESPN.com has begun its annual top 10 positional ranking series where Jeremy Fowler, former Vikings beat writer, talks to like people in the league, executives, GMs, et cetera, and gets their top 10 players at each position. And so ESPN started the series with its running back ranking. So these are coaches, scouts, executives. Mm. And I, I won't go through the whole thing, but Christian McCaffrey's number one, Brees Hall, number two now. 
it's kind of crazy how things turn over for that position. God, yeah. But for the Vikings, Aaron Jones just missed the list here. He's the number one honorable mention. So for all, I guess, for this exercise, you could say he's the 11th best running back in the NFL. Jones finished the season with five consecutive 100-yard games. He lost a tight battle with uh, Travis Etienne for the 10th spot. One NFC defensive coach said Green Bay's offense was completely different when he was healthy. He is a difference maker. So my question to you guys is, is enough being made of the Vikings going from, not to pile on Alexander Madison, but one of the worst starting running backs in the NFL to maybe one of the 10 best starting running backs in the NFL, essentially overnight, and Ty Chandler is still in the room? So I think enough has been made because of the key to this entire conversation, which is, is Kevin O'Connell now going to use the, the run game more often? Like, I, I think that's where the hesitancy is. Uh, if this had been Madison in back-to-back years, I think the Jones signing is talked about more, but it literally went Dalvin Cook, who didn't have a great year, but broke off some nice runs, right? To Madison, now to Jones. And you did have the chance to play Chandler a little bit more last year, and you didn't. And so I think part of why we are still cool on the Vikings run game is more philosophical than personnel wise. Uh, Now, if Jones gets the ball more and they start to run more, I I think it becomes a story. But if you go and look in O'Connell's first two two years, the Vikings have been near the bottom of the entire league in carries just period. Yeah. So like, I think that's where the hesitancy to get too excited comes in until we find out that the run game is going to be used more. Now I will say the, the Packers, the Vikings were 28th in rushing attempts. The Packers were 22nd. So it wasn't like the Packers right, were sure. a bell cow team, but the Packers sure. did run the ball 50 more times. So even like three or four more times per game. Absolutely. It, you know, one, one extra run per quarter. It, it is meaningful. But mm-hmm. if I, if, if I sort of, if Alexander Madison was the best guy in that position group room for me, I'm probably not running the ball top half yeah. of the league either once I figured out. Now, the, the rip is, why did you go into the season with this faith that Alexander Madison, who right. was a three and a half yards per carry guy, was going to all of a sudden be something he wasn't? So to fix this position like this, I think I think I don't think it's going to vault them t- to 12th in rushing attempts. But yeah, you should you shouldn't be 28th next year. Yeah. And I, I think the fact that you're going to transition to Darnold at quarterback, too means that you flat out need to run more. Like, I don't think that you can put the workload on Sammy Boy that you put on Kirk. Don't disrespect him by calling him Sammy Boy, okay? What? what? Don't disrespect him boy? like that. It's, wrong, it's like cheers. In front of a Darnold defender here, okay? I, I take, Sammy offense, boy? take offense to that. It's a term that. of endearment for me. <laughs> Dex, you were jumping in. Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, uh, I th- I just think Aaron Jones is a lot more left in the tank and and... He can definitely, I think, be more of an effective back than what we saw, obviously, from Madison and Chandler last year. And in general, he's he plays the chip on his shoulder too. Like he, you know, he's gonna want like fifteen or like twenty touches against the Packers in both those games and want to run up and down against them for kind of dogging him, honestly, in this whole free agency process by cutting him late and stuff too. So I think there's still a good amount of a player left there in Aaron Jones that definitely will also fix Kevin O'Connell's offensive problems when it comes to the running the football that's the beauty of Aaron Jones is here are his attempts in his career 81 133 236 was a career high back in 2019 but that's nowhere near the 275 or 300 that you know some of these previous bell cows have been racking up 201 171 213 142 so even though he's 29 he doesn't have multiple seasons of 270, 290, you know, leading the league in carries. He's been part of running back splits and platoons, just like he was for, you know, a period last year in Green Bay. So um, it it should be an upgrade. Okay. Let's see here. Breamstoms, 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 9987 in the YouTube comments. He asks a very broad question here. How do the Vikings stack up against the other NFC North teams in your minds? Very broad, very broad question. Um, Well, I I think the defense is going to be improved, and it it wasn't certainly, it was far from being bad a year ago. Uh, I would say this. I think against the Bears, I'm not sold on on the Bears, okay? I think the Bears have some good personnel. I think the quarterback is a complete 
unknown and he might be great eventually but like asking him in in his first year to be great to me huge ask i think the vikings stack up very well against the bears um after massive disrespect from me for like three years on detroit they clearly are good i think that's i think they are i think they go in as the best team in the division so i think that they in trying to stack them up i like them more than the vikings currently and the packers the Packers win, but I'm still curious about them. Like, I would not say that I, I think that the Vikings are clearly inferior to the Packers. Jordan Love played well, but it's still not a huge sample size yet. I like him. I think the Packers are slightly better than the Vikings, but I'm not, like, convinced that the Packers are clearly superior to the Vikings. I, I think, you know, I mean, listeners of this show are going to hate me for this, but I think Lions are clear cut one of the three or four best teams in the league. Both sides of the ball on the in the trenches, you know, look look what they have with that offensive line too. They're explosive offensively. Jared Goff has just been a rock solid trigger man. I don't think he's a top five quarterback, but he's certainly in the mix as a top ten quarterback. He has led two different teams deep in the playoffs, one to a Super Bowl with the Rams and then the the Lions last year. So like, it's like the Lions don't have a lot to say. Unless you just don't believe that Dan Campbell is going to keep that locker room long term, but to this point, there's nothing that suggests that he doesn't have it yeah. for for this year. Yeah. I do think the Packers are a level better than the Vikings. What they did the second half of the season, and yeah. then to go into Dallas and win a road playoff game, if if they're getting that version of Jordan Love and Matt Lafleur, give that guy credit, man. I mean, the Packers have had some great regular season success. He revived the end of Aaron Rodgers' career post Mike McCarthy, and now he looks like he's created a monster in Jordan Love. And the Packers have one of the youngest rosters too, so they're just, they get a lot of talent across the board. Where I where I disagree the most with the NFC North discourse is this idea that the Bears are a level past the Vikings. That, oh, the, like, the Bears, now that they have Caleb Williams, I don't know that they have the right head coach. They haven't developed a quarterback in decades. Yeah. So I need to see more from the Bears collectively before I say, oh, yeah, that's a team ready to win 10 or 11 games and make a big yeah. a big jump. With the Vikings, I agree with Judd. Defense should be better. There's questions about the interior offensive line. Quarterback is the biggest question because you've got two completely unproven guys at this point. And then, you know, I mean, it's a tragedy just happened three weeks before training camp. How do a bunch of human beings in a locker room react to that going forward, yeah. too? It's just That's a big question, some unknown factors. But so my biggest beef is the way that the Bears and Vikings are that there's like a gap between those teams. And if if there is, I would say maybe the Vikings are above the Bears by a level as a, as opposed to vice versa. Mm-hmm. Dex? Yeah, I, there, there's definitely a gap between the Lions and probably not as steep, but the Packers as well. I do think, though, the Vikings just personnel especially offensively is incredibly slept on uh I, I yes the quarterback position at sam darnold not a lot to write home about jj mccarthy's a project but when you look at the two wide receivers two offensive tackles a tight end who's going to miss probably the first few a few month uh, month of the season aaron jones like personnel wise on offense i think they're one of they're, they're legit they have a top 10 personnel i really do if you remove the quarterback which is a very important piece of this pie but I think it's going to be probably still a slow burn to get them back to relevancy because there is just a huge question mark at the most important position yeah. in football. Okay, we got more here, including one. It's a big week for Declan, and somebody has a, a question for Dex here. But uh, coming up in a few weeks, uh, you know, you got you got uh, training camp coming up, but you also have the road to SummerSlam, and there's a couple huge wrestling marks and nerds on this show as Judd laughs at both of us. So what we're doing right now on the Score North app is we're giving away five pair of tickets to hang out with me and Declan, our guy Ross Brendel, also at Score North, huge wrestling fan. We have a suite at the XL Energy Center for Monday Night Raw on July 29th. It's the Raw before SummerSlam. God, that's right. So here's how you can enter to win. We're giving away five pair of tickets on the Score North app, so it's free to download the Score North app. There's a there's a menu. You can go and find the listener reward section, and you'll see the Monday Night Raw uh, link to tap on. The promo code is SLAM, S-L-A-M, for your chance to enter. And uh, we'll pick some winners here in a couple of weeks. 
We're looking forward to hanging out with 10 of you, five pair of tickets, 10 of you at Monday Night Raw, July 29th. We'll get judged. Let's get, let's, I let's send my best. Judgment. I send okay, my what, best. What what'd you think of Drew McIntyre cashing in money in the bank, you know, Couldn't right away it. after winning the briefcase last Saturday? You know what? You know, when Phil was gone, when you inform me that what the people's champion is gone, what what's the one you, with the, the, the 24-7 title? 24/7, the 24-7 yeah, the, the, title. I, I'm out. The 24-7 yeah. title was my favorite thing. It's a great title. Yeah, you, you could just be like sleeping in your hotel room. And How did I get rid of it? As long as an opponent brings a referee, he can start a match anywhere. <laughs> Rob Gronkowski won the 24-7. I know, Rock that's when I fell in yeah. love with the idea of the 24-7, and now it's gone, Declan told me. Um, hey, also, if you are looking maybe for a career change, maybe you're a recent high school or college grad and you're looking to jump into something, Burnsville Heating and Air is hiring full-time positions and they're offering up to a $2,000 sign-on bonus. Full-time, year-round work with lots of over, uh, overtime opportunities all over the Twin Cities so you can work close to home. And It doesn't matter what skill level, by the way. They'll hire apprentices, leads, finishers, equipment setters. They will train you and they offer comprehensive benefits. 401k with a 4% employer contribution, health insurance, dental, vision, life insurance, and paid time off. Apply now at burnsvilleheating.com and click careers. That's burnsvilleheating.com and click careers. Okay. Let's see what else you guys sent in here. Oh, here it is. This is from our meteorologist, Paul. Paul Iniguez, the Purple Daily official meteorologist. That's right. Hope Declan's wedding is inside. Otherwise, old Dex and guests are going to have some major swamp ass. Heat and humidity coming in Friday and getting worse throughout the weekend via our official Purple Daily meteorologist, Paul Indiguez. Dex? Yes, uh, we will be inside. So we have the okay. option. Actually, we have 24 more hours to give them the heads up if we want to be outside. However... Uh, with the impending forecast, we are sitting at about 90 degrees on Saturday. Uh, and two things. Number one, last Saturday I was at a wedding, a beautiful outdoor wedding at the St. Paul College Club next to the Governor's Mansion on Summit Avenue in St. Paul. And the left side of the ceremony was just baked in the sun oh. for the 15 minutes. I had sweat. I don't sweat. I have to really be working or literally be standing directly in the sun to sweat. I'm not a sweater. And when I can feel the bead just coming down my face, I know I'm in trouble. Did you have um, this, the the whole suit on too? I I, I took the jacket off because I because okay. I would have I would have suffered some stroke. Picture. You yeah, I, I, the shirt. You took the I, jacket well. That's off. that's a like dance like, floor, Declan. The the the, the like more naked. drunker and the more fun I am on the dance floor, the more buttons that will come off. That's just that's just who I am on the dance floor. Uh, but no, we will be inside. And also, if I remember correctly. Uh, when Sports Dad met, met, met my lovely fiance for the first time, his first two things he said were, were "Congratulations on your engagement," and two, "Is the wedding inside?" Because I know Judd loves him some Central Air. So yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't attend if it was outside. That was the second question you asked. Uh, I, Kelsey no, actually, after I think me. it was the it was the third. You said, "Please don't get congratulations. Yeah. Please don't get married during football season." And will the wedding be inside? <laughs> all pertinent. All, all very well, important info for John. I mean, this is you huge, did start but, with congratulations. But we need to have a, one that can't be, you know uh, what, once once training camp starts, it's over, okay? Dude, Everything goes De on hold. To Dex's point, there is nothing more torturous at a wedding than you're sitting out. And you think in your head, like, oh, beautiful outdoor setting. Yeah. But if there's not cover and it's 90 degrees and it's humid... And I, usually, like, you, you keep the sport coat on or the, the suit coat. Yeah. And now you're turning into Bruce Pearl, you know, that basketball coach that sweats through his... Remember when yeah. he coached at Tennessee? Oh, and he'd yeah. have the orange blazer and he'd be yeah. sweating through the blazer, you know? Yeah, and I'm a sweater, no so I, I can't be... I need to be inside. <laughs> um, no, the, the, we'll, we'll be inside for the ceremony. There is, like, a, there's like a courtyard that kind of, like, flanks both sides of our building. So there is, like, an outdoor area where people can sure. still, like, go outside, grab a drink, sit out, you know, be out there okay. if it's comfortable. But, no, you'll be air-conditioned. You'll be good. Don't got to worry about it. Yeah, I'm willing to bet Don will be outside and I'll be inside because that's how we both roll. <laughs> Judd just uh, sitting right next to the central air vents. Yeah. Just, just, just Hello. Oh, you know what? No, no. It's Look, I, I, I wholeheartedly approve of what I'm hearing right now. Okay. Wholeheartedly. Just make Sounds sure like you run wedding. any last minute ideas or changes yeah. by hey, Judd. Okay. Yeah. Just make it depends sure. what it is. I mean, if it doesn't impact me, I don't care. 
G J. I mean, the gift is bought. The gift is is there. You've got the gift. We got the gift. I yep. got to go Thank pick you. up the suit tomorrow. So like, I'm ready for this thing. <laughs> what gift did you get? The goss. Dawn got it. It's a blanket or something. I don't uh, really know. A, ba- a barefoot dreams blanket. I don't know if you guys have a barefoot dreams blanket. We already have two in our house, and now we have a third thanks to the Zolgads. Um, they are top tier blankets. They're very good blankets. Should get a few for the Mackies. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you know, renew our vows. They got two. Uh, GJ4303 says Does anyone on the show have any Vikings hope you can share with us? You say you want you want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before you die. What should make Vikings fans hopeful? Wow. Well, I think that this team is, in my opinion, what I've seen, and we, we've talked about this and I praise them, I think the offseason and the direction that they're going is positive. And so, like, do I think they're going to win a Super Bowl this season? No. So, you know, ideally the mission would be just to win Super Bowl after Super Bowl and forget the problems of the past with this franchise. Uh, I don't think that's going to take place. Do I think that they potentially are on the right track to build up a team that could be a championship team? Yes, I do. And so I think that that there, that there is hope. I mean, J.J. McCarthy, the drafting of McCarthy, right? Um, that's going out and taking a chance, but you have to do that. So... I think the hope is in the direction that they're going. It promised that promises nothing, but I don't think during the course of the spring and summer, you you guys, I don't think that we have been, you know, all three of us. I think we've been pretty upbeat about the direction here. Like I, I don't think that we're talking about oh my god they screwed this up they screwed th- that up. I think they've made some good moves, and I'm also extremely hopeful because next March they should have a ton of cap space. Mm-hmm. Declan, what, what 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 hopeful comments do you have? I mean, the, the hopeful comments is you finally have drafted and are developing a quarterback of for the next ten years. Uh, something that this franchise really hasn't necessarily a hit on, but b done a lot of. I mean, Teddy was awesome and that was fun, but then his knee exploded in a practice. So uh, the, the fact that we're basically kind of back at where we were ten years ago when Teddy got drafted in twenty fourteen. You know, the hope is that J.J. McCarthy is, you know, this next big franchise-changing quarterback where you're not having to go and spending big-time money for on free agency to a Kirk Cousins or hoping that Sam Darnold or Case Keenum can take you on a magic carpet ride. I, I think that part's exciting. And you have a very likable and approachable head coach. I think Kevin O'Connell is a very relatable, likable, and smart head coach. So I, I think there are things to be hopeful on. Yeah, like... Obviously, they have to have hit on the quarterback, but they've they've made a lot of the moves that you need to make to line up for Super Bowl, uh, I guess, like Super Bowl DNA. You either need to have a Hall of Fame quarterback or you need to have a rookie skill contract quarterback or you, or you need to hope that you're one of the like five to 10 percent outliers that that weren't in one of those two categories. So they, they move from outlier to OK. Maybe maybe McCarthy winds up being both. You know, it's funny because like Vikings fans, we don't allow ourselves to think that way. You think J.J. McCarthy, oh my God, he's going to be Christian Ponder or Tavares Jackson or something, right? But there's a chance he could be Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady or Josh Allen or, you know, pick your high-end quarterback. It's, you know, 60 plus years of pessimism that's sort of preventing you from going down that positive path mentally. But I, yeah, I love everything you, you guys said is, uh, is spot on. And then I would say like another just hopeful thing is math. There's no way that you can be over the long haul, the third most frequent playoff team and never win a Super Bowl. If you're getting to the playoffs, you know, 50% of the time or 60% of the time, whatever, I think it's like 50% of the time the Vikings get to the playoffs as a franchise. You're gonna win one at some point. You're gonna run into something. The, 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 Cub, the Cubs eventually snapped a 108-year World Series drought. The Red Sox eventually snapped an 86-year World Series drought. Like at some point, the math is gonna shake out in your favor. You're gonna go on a lucky run, or you're gonna be dominant. It's hard to wrap your head around because it's never happened before, but it will happen at some point. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this show is still gonna be around or not, but well, you the never next know. The, the next iteration can can carry us through the finish line. And then Sir Pablo, 
he says, it'd be great to see some segments on the show that focus on the players as people, not just players, reveal the person behind the mask, so to speak. It's fun to personalize the players and get to know them as people. So for Judd, who is your favorite person to have covered and why? As a former lead beat writer for the Star oh, Tribune. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those were the days. Um, this is an interesting question. So I'm going to answer... I'm going to answer this question, first of all, with why, like, I know exactly what, what that is saying. Oh, you're going to uh, create a, a separate yeah, question, question that wasn't well, asked? Well, no, I want to answer the question. No, but I want to answer it and tell, and tell you why I, I don't necessarily think that it helps people get an idea about who people truly are when they come on like a show like this. Okay. So just first of all, part of the issue when you try to go outside of football and get uh and get more in depth with people on a show like this is you know think back to a guy like we brought this up a thousand times darren sharper who was incredibly engaging right and 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 you said a little too engaging yeah a little too engaging but you said to yourself when you saw sharp talk oh my god darren sharper this is a real and then it turns out he's a despicable human being so it makes that difficult um, I had a few guys that I in enjoyed for various reasons. Actually, in his playing day, and Phil, you, you can attest to, to this, one of the go-to guys was Matt Burke. He in was, his playing yeah. days. He was a go-to guy. He was a great quote. He was thoughtful. He has become extremely polarizing with his, yes, but with as his a player, political run now, but yeah. But as a player, he was he was one of, I mean, he had the greatest quote of all, all time to SI in 2005 during the love boat thing when he told them we put the fun in dysfunction yeah that was a great quote <laughs> um and then there have been characters i mean Vasante shanko comes to mind he was a complete character oh and a my great god quote. that guy so you we know. used to shanko used to be a weekly guest on the old Roycey and mackie show for oh, that's like, right the 2011 I forgot, I forgot all about that yeah and and every single week he would because it would be i think a tuesday and he'd be at home on his off day on a tuesday oh didn't know and, tuesdays well, he's a tight end, though. Oh, got it. I'm okay with a tight Didn't end work not working Tuesdays. Quarterback, we've already hashed this up. But <laughs> but as you saw with Kirk Cousins on Tuesdays, you a lot of these players will have, like, physical and massage therapists come into their home, right? So yeah. Shanko would be doing the radio hits while laying down. He would explain to us, like, yeah, if I'm, if I'm a little, like, you know, jumpy, it's because I'm getting a deep tissue massage right now during – I'm multitasking during the radio interview. <laughs> wow i didn't remember that story yeah so he was uh yeah i mean it's i think sometimes with football players it is hard to get to know the person behind the mask because there's 53 guys on every active roster and right you know that's what's fun about when you get the alex boons on or like jeremiah Cyril's has become a friend of the show and these guys who are just pawns on a chessboard on a 53-man roster right a number and a helmet and you don't even know what half these guys faces look like because it's football and they're just out there marching around yep. it is harder to feel a connection to football players than maybe basketball where the rosters are smaller and their faces are exposed and the seats are closer yeah right? and plus you know what i, I mean th think about the extreme difference potentially too in when a guy is playing and and then done i mean boone was a great quote but boone now to me is a very different guy you know because when, when you're playing a sport, there's this alpha, I'm part of a team, I got to show my teammates I'm tough, right? Like like our, our guy Ploofy, Trevor Ploof's a, in Trevor Ploof is always a nice enough guy, but he is a very different person than I thought that he was as a player. He was uh, hesitant with the media when he was yep. a player. Which I don't blame him, I'm just saying it was hard to get to know him then, and now yeah. I feel like, oh, he's a really good guy. Yep. So... We appreciate you guys sending us just a bunch of topics and questions to kick around here today. We got write that down predictions coming up tomorrow on the show. Our friends at Federated are helping to power Purple Daily on a week by week basis too, just like they're helping countless businesses around the country. They're based in Owatonna, Minnesota since 1904, but they have roots all across the United States. So if you're a business owner out there and you're a Purple Daily listener or viewer, whether you live in Minnesota or your company is based elsewhere, Federated Insurance is here to help you. They measure their success at Federated by the success of your business, and uh, they have helped elevate countless businesses through risk management, looking out on the horizon, acting as an offensive line for your business. 
so to speak. Find out more at federatedinsurance.com where it's our business to protect yours. So we've got Netflix wide receiver coming out tomorrow. Like I said, we've got the write that down predictions. We've got training camp coming up in a couple of weeks, feedback Friday. So we are on the path here. We're much closer to the start of actual football than mm. uh, than the end of last football season by by a couple months now. A week so from up. Sunday, rookies report, and then uh, a week from two from next Tuesday, the entire roster is in. So less than two weeks, right? Yep. Or two weeks? Yep. No, two weeks from today. two weeks from today. Two. No. But less than than two weeks for the first gr- the first batch of of players to report. Let's go on the twenty first. So let's go. All right, boys. Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die.